Hannibal, Missouri is a small town of about 17,000 people that sits along the famous Mississippi River. It's most well known for being the childhood home of author Mark Twain, who often wrote stories about young boys going on adventures. But in 1967, three boys went on their own adventure in the town and never returned. Let's talk about the lost boys of Hannibal, who haven't been seen or heard from in almost 55 years. Joel Wise Hogue was born on July 25th, 1954 to mom Helen and dad Mike. About two years later, he was joined by younger brother William Francis. Billy and Joey, as they were more commonly known, also had nine other siblings. According to their sister Deborah, who went by Dee Dee, Billy was very mischievous, while Joey was more serious and interested in science, especially astronomy. Both boys were very adventurous and loved exploring the area around their home with their various friends and classmates. One particular area the boys loved in 1967 was Murphy's Cave, which at the time was close to the construction of Highway 79. I did read on a forum that the cave was actually discovered during the construction, but I can't confirm this. On Monday, May 8th, 1967, Billy and Joey were exploring the cave when they were spotted by a worker. The worker told them to get out of the cave because it was dangerous, but no known precautions were taken after that to keep other explorers away. Despite the worker's warning, the boys went back the next day with two of their friends. Later that night, they came home covered in mud and were promptly scolded by their mom. She ordered them to wash their clothes, and both their parents warned them to never go near their construction site again, or they would be in major trouble. But as young children often do, they didn't listen. The next day was Wednesday, May 10th. The boys' parents, who owned a popular tavern in town, left the house around 4 p.m. to go to a meat market. Before they left, they gave their older children orders to make sure Billy and Joey didn't leave the house. But at some point, 15-year-old Tim Hogue and 16-year-old Dee Dee lost track of their younger brothers who slipped out of the yard and headed for another adventure. A flashlight and shovel were later discovered to be missing from the home. Over the course of that afternoon, just like the previous days, the boys were spotted with several of their peers. One of them was 14-year-old Craig Dowell, who some sources described as a friend of theirs and others as an acquaintance. The boys also asked another friend of theirs, 11-year-old Greg Henderson, to go with them to Murphy's Cave, but he got called in for dinner before he could go. They were reportedly in Murphy's Cave around 4.35 p.m., but gone a few minutes later. They were spotted several more times around town between 4.40 and 5.15, sometimes together, sometimes separately. From here, some of the details become fuzzy. There are a few contradictory accounts and details of what exactly happened between now and the time anyone realized Billy, Joey, and Craig were missing. One source says the last known sighting of the boys was by a teenage girl. Another said it was by a teacher. Yet another said they were last spotted on top of a cliff called Lover's Leap by a janitor at their school around 5.15 p.m. But this is the last reported sighting of them, and after this, all traces of them were lost. It was also around this time that another friend of the Hogue brothers stopped by their house to see if they were there. Their parents, who were back from the meat market by this point, said that they weren't home, but told the friend that if he saw them, to hurry home. When they weren't home by 5.45, their brother Tim started looking for them. He went to Murphy's cave and saw some of the boys' friends there, who said they'd seen Billy, Joey, and Craig going into the cave earlier, but a quick search of the cave by Tim turned up nothing. Just before 6.30 p.m., their mother, Helen Hogue, called the police. In addition to the police, groups like the Mark Twain Emergency Squad and the National Speleological Society were brought in to help look for the boys. 
Altogether, over 200 cave explorers, both professional experts and amateur enthusiasts, searched through Murphy's Cave, mapping it out as they went. Some of the passages they searched were so narrow that one of the more petite searchers at 98 pounds could barely squeeze in. But within a few days, the boys still hadn't been found, and people started to wonder if they really were in the cave. Had they even returned to the cave after those last few sightings of them around town, or had something else happened to them? Investigators searched trains that had left Hannibal around the time the boys were last seen, perhaps wondering if they had been snatched without anyone noticing. But these searches, just like the ones in the caves, didn't lead to much. The preliminary search was called off 10 days later, though another source said the cave would continue to be searched for the next month. In 2006, the entrance to Murphy's Cave was discovered during the building of an elementary school. It was searched by police, but again, no traces of the boys were found. In 2015, Hannibal Police Department Lieutenant John Zerbonia said the case would stay open, but that there probably wouldn't be any more searches. The case of the Lost Boys of Hannibal has been the subject of at least three books. The first was called A Sorrow of the Heart by Charles Stewart, published in either 2009 or 2010. The other two were written by John Wingate, a childhood friend of the boys. The Lost Boys of Hannibal was released in 2017, and Souls Speak in 2019. The case has also been the subject of a podcast, also called The Lost Boys of Hannibal, which aired its first episode in July of 2019. Podcasters Frankie Campbelletta and Chris Coders have done a pretty deep dive into the case and even said they wanted to solve it. Links to the podcast and books can be found in the description. According to an October 2020 post on John Wingate's website, there is a new effort underway to keep mapping out Murphy's Cave. There are no plans to open up the cave system to the public, and the project is limited to skilled and experienced cavers, according to the post. No human remains have been found during this new effort. So what happened to the Lost Boys of Hannibal? There is a theory that they ran away, but this isn't very likely. There wasn't really any evidence I could find that they would want to do this, and they all had plans for the evening that they failed to show up for. The next theory is that the boys were kidnapped and possibly killed. Like I just alluded to, they were supposed to be at church that evening, and probably would have had to catch the bus between 5.30 and 5.45 to be there by 6 p.m. Yet they were reportedly sighted near Murphy's Cave as late as 5.15, likely with dirty shoes and clothes that they would have had to then go home and clean up. Was this just a case of kids being irresponsible, as they often are, or were they trying to evade someone who was following them? Or did someone around town perhaps just spot three young boys traveling alone at some point and see a crime of opportunity. The aforementioned book, Souls Speak, also explores the possibility that the boys were early victims of John Wayne Gacy. The next theory is that the boys were trapped somewhere and succumbed to the elements or died from injuries. During the highway construction, sections of the road were being blasted to destroy them and make way for the new road. This blasting created large holes. These holes were sealed up a few days after the boys went missing, despite orders from the mayor to keep them open. Dee Dee Hogue believes her brothers and Craig Dowell may have gotten trapped in one of these holes and accidentally buried after they were sealed up. Other similar theories suggest they were trapped in a road cave-in, fell into a sinkhole, or did return to the cave only to become trapped somewhere where they couldn't be found. Like a lot of other things in nature, caves are often large and vastly uncharted. It's entirely possible that even the most meticulous searches could fail to turn up human remains. The last theory is that the boys didn't actually go missing all at once. 
They were reportedly spotted in and around Murphy's Cave on the day they disappeared, but some of these sightings were not of all three of them. Did they separate and go missing in multiple different ways in two or even three bizarre, tragic coincidences? There is one more point of speculation I want to go over, and I do want to emphasize this is speculation, not accusations. At the time the boys went missing, machines being used to search the caves could go as far down as 39 feet, but the mayor reportedly ordered them to only go down 37 feet. Greg Henderson, the boy's 11-year-old friend who barely missed the trip that day, thinks there might have been corruption involved. He believes the mayor and others involved in the search may not have wanted to find the boys for fear of lawsuits if it could be proven that they died at a dangerous construction site. William Francis Hogue, Joel Wise Hogue, and Edwin Craig Dowell were 11, 13, and 14, respectively, when they were last seen in Hannibal, Missouri, on the afternoon of May 10th, 1967. Billy has red hair and blue eyes and a scar under his right arm. Joey has brown hair and eyes and was last seen wearing a t-shirt and jeans. If you have any information about this case, you can contact the Hannibal Police Department at 573-221-0900. If you found this video interesting or informative, I would love it if you would like and share it. For more missing persons cases and other general dark content, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.